You all have come after my marriage time after time again. That's true. I am done turning the other cheek because you guys are so f***ing disrespectful so you're, so at all times to my marriage and to me. And Mia, I brought you in this group. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 14. And before we get started, let me just say that this episode is a clear example of what Candace said five episodes ago, that the goalpost is always moving. Because I'm confused at how the two people who have been icing Candace and Wendy out all season long now have the audacity to fix their mouths and complain about Wendy and Candace making faces. I'm confused. You can't have it both ways, Giselle and Robin. You have made it clear that you have no intention of ever speaking to Wendy and Candace again. So you can't be upset when they give you that same energy back. Somebody let me know, where in the world do you have the right to ice people out, be mean girls, but yet you still want them to respect you and listen to you and be attentive and warm and caring when you say something? That's not how this works especially you, Giselle. Every time Wendy opens her mouth to speak, you're rolling your eyes, making faces. You went out of your way to disrespect Wendy at Ashley's housewarming earlier on in this season. When Wendy went up to everybody to give them hugs, you purposely moved your body like this to make it clear that you didn't want her coming near you, you didn't want her touching you. So again, sis, let's stop. But y'all, let me not jump ahead. Let's just get right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up this episode right where we left it off last week with the continuation of Giselle crowning NECA as the new grand dame of Potomac. Everybody's staring like, what is going on? Karen was not here for it at all. So NECA gives this speech saying that she wants to thank all of them for acknowledging her new home in Potomac. Then she goes on to say that Giselle crowning her the new grand dame, the title is a bit beyond her years, but she'll take it because obviously Giselle is concerned and how she's here to do the people's work. I said, NECA, Please don't get beside yourself. There is only one grand dame in this group and her name is Karen Huger, period, point blank. I don't care if you like Karen or not, but it is what it is. Girl, we don't even want you here on this show. So please, hopefully Bravo will hear our cries and NECA will be a one and done. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy wasn't here for the BS. She says, where's Candace? We all remember how in the last episode, Candace stormed off because she was pissed. So Wendy goes off to find Candace. She goes into her room. She's like, hey girl, are you okay? Candace says, oh, I was just trying to find my necklace, but this whole thing is just so stupid. Now, let me stop for a minute because a lot of y'all made some great points in my last recap. I didn't even think about this, but a lot of y'all said you thought that Candace storming off was a bit over the top because Karen would never do the same for her. We've seen in many instances, every time something goes down, Karen is always playing Switzerland. She's always neutral. And we saw that in season five when Candace was assaulted, Karen refused to pick a side. And we even saw in the last season when Wendy was assaulted in Miami, Karen was saying, oh, well, nobody's completely innocent. Mia and Wendy were both wrong. And to piggyback off of that, I feel like when dealing with people like Giselle who want to get under your skin, you really have to ignore them. You can't give people like her or Robin the satisfaction that they're getting under your skin. So I definitely agree with you guys that Candace was doing a bit too much storming off like that. Like, girl, I understand that you don't like Giselle, but don't give her that satisfaction that you're bothered. And furthermore, if Karen is being a good sport about it, then why are you so bent out of shape about it? You can't be more upset about that than Karen is when Karen is the actual grand dame. So at this point, Ashley's asking Karen if Karen wants to share any words. And Karen says, well, all I have to say is that it's lonely at the top and I'm glad that you've been crowned the Grand Dame of Potomac 20854 because the original Grand Dame has already been taken. But then she goes on to say that she loves it. 
And now Neca says, oh, I see the shade, but that's okay. And Karen says, no, girl, it's no shade towards you. All my shade is going towards Giselle because Giselle tried it. Karen was not here for it. She said, girl, you don't even live in Potomac. So how can you crown somebody Miss Potomac when you don't even live here? So Giselle says, well, I know, but I can still do it because I live in Bethesda and I own my home in Bethesda. First of all, Giselle, you keep trying to throw it in Karen's face that you and NECA are owners and Karen is now renting, but let's not forget season one when you were renting and Karen was an owner. So let's not act like you always owned your home because that wasn't the case. And Karen is correct. If anybody's going to crown anybody as a grand dame, it should be Karen because one, Karen is the grand dame and two, she does live in Potomac, whether she's renting or owning. So Giselle says, it's just so funny when Karen tries to act like she's not angry when she's angry because her nose starts getting all witchy, then her mouth starts twitching. Karen is hot. And I'm like, you really get off on trying to piss folks off because I don't understand why you're just so hell bent on trying to embarrass Karen every chance you get. And you fall short because this whole crowning process was just stupid. And you high key set NECA up for failure because there's nobody who's watching and nobody on your cast who will ever refer to NECA as the grand dame of anything. Karen took me all the way out in her confessional. She says Giselle does not have the power to crown. And on top of that, you got this child out here with party city crowns on, and this is not a crowning, it's a clowning. When she took that clown mask out, I was screaming. <laughs> because one thing about it, I am quick to call anybody on any franchise a clown, and I will always put a clown emoji. <laughs> So when she brought out that clown mask, I was screaming. <laughs> so now it's time for them to play some night golf and it looked like a lot of fun. I told you guys in my previous Married to Medicine recap that I definitely wanna get into playing golf. Golf looks like so much fun and all the cute guys on the golf course with a cute coin too. <laughs> but this night golf looked really lit and Candace was actually good at it. They were like, okay, Candace. And Candace was low key dressed like she was going to a PGA tournament anyway. I said, okay, she was prepared. She had her Ralph Lauren polo on, her shorts, her little visor. I said, come through. She was definitely giving us golf attire. <laughs> So everybody's playing golf, having some fun, mingling, drinking. And now we see Karen pull Candace to the side and she's like, just checking on you because I noticed at the crowning ceremony, you walked away. So Candace says, yes, I did. I walked away because it was just so stupid. So Karen says, honestly, Candace, I wasn't even bothered by it because thankfully I don't need a title. I don't depend on titles. Titles don't make you or break you. Now, Karen, while that is true, true that titles don't make or break somebody. I don't really believe that you don't care because the way you will flex and let somebody know in a heartbeat that you are the grand dame of Potomac, I'm not really buying that you don't care. And I'm going to say this because I have met all these women. I say this respectfully, but y'all all have some pretty big egos. Okay. And again, I don't say that with shade. I'm not saying that you guys are rude in person. All I am saying is that y'all definitely have some healthy egos on y'all, especially Karen. When you see Karen at BravoCon, Karen enjoys being the grand dame. She loves the title and she is attached to the title. So to hear her say, oh, well, I don't care about that and titles don't mean anything to me and I don't need that for my self-esteem. Mm, let's not do that because a lot of y'all do tie up your self-esteem and your self-worth to this show because we see how 99.9% .9 of the time when a housewife leaves the show, AKA she's fired, but every time a housewife departs, nine times out of 10, they still have a hard time letting this show go. 
So what does that tell you? That they are attached to this show, they are attached to the title of being a real housewife because of the status, the fame, the notoriety, and they don't want to feel like they're now yesterday's news. But Karen definitely nailed it when she said that Giselle takes jabs because she has nothing going on in her life. And that is true because the things that she comes up with season after season, going after people's marriages, attacking people, lying on folks' husbands, too much time on her hands and too much time deflecting from what's going on in her own life. While Karen and Candace are talking, we see Giselle, Mia, and Neca talking about Giselle and Jason's relationship. Now again, I don't believe that Jason and Giselle are really doing anything. I don't know. It feels like this is a PR stunt for the both of them, especially Jason, because Giselle is more famous than Jason is. I really think that Jason is using her for clout and some cheap fame. That's what I think. I don't really think that it's a real love connection. And I do think it's strange that we only saw Jason in the first episode and we haven't seen him since. We've only heard about him. Another reason why I feel like this relationship or situationship, whatever you want to call it, isn't real. So they finished playing night golf and now it's time for them to head to the restaurant. Now it was funny because on their way there, they're all in these golf carts and we see Mia and Giselle in a golf cart together and Mia's driving. Now did anybody notice how thrilled Mia was to be in the golf cart with Giselle. Her body language looked like, oh my gosh, I'm hanging out with a popular girl. Like she wants to hang out with me because the way the thirst oozes out of her pores, she literally looked like she had hit the jackpot being in the same golf cart as Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> so they're at the restaurant, they're all seated. We see Wendy complimenting Robin on how the trip has been fun, how the restaurant is beautiful. And now we see Giselle say to Karen, Karen, I just wanted to say thank you because as you know, Grace graduated last Monday and we hear Candace say, oh, congratulations. So now Giselle goes on to say that she took Karen's advice about not crying so much at the graduation and making sure that she focused on the moment and didn't take the attention away from Grace if she got overly emotional. So she says, yeah, Karen, I took your advice. I pulled myself together, so thank you. So Karen says, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And now Giselle shares that Grace is excited and she leaves for college next Tuesday. So now Kierna interjects and she's asking Giselle, what school is Grace going to? Giselle responds and says that Grace is going to an HBCU in Florida. And we all know that Grace goes to Florida A&M, FAMU, the same HBCU that Heavenly's daughter Alora goes to. So here's where the conversation takes a turn. Mia says, that's great, but are you worried? about her going to college in Florida with all that's going on. And Giselle says, yeah, I do worry. I have my concerns because Florida is like a whole different world and their governor is acting a fool. And I just tell her, be safe, stay on campus. Don't go around gallivanting all over Florida and you'll be fine. But I definitely do worry. Now, mind you, while Giselle is talking about Grace going to school and her concerns, Candace and Wendy are making faces. So now we see Robin staring at them and she says, I understand that Candace and Wendy don't like Giselle, but they're making faces, rolling their eyes. And it's like, really? Have some respect. Giselle is talking about her daughter. And I said, Robin, let me wear you out quickly because one, the audacity, the same woman who sat there and laughed while Wendy got a drink thrown in her face last season. So don't you dare now try to be the moral police about what's right and what's not right. How dare you? Giselle said out of her mouth at the reunion that she did not care about Wendy being assaulted because she did not like her. A grown woman in her 50s said that about her castmate. And Robin, you are the same woman who happily excluded Wendy's children from your family fun day. So let's not talk about, oh, these are children. You don't do that. 
because obviously you had no concern or care about Wendy's kids being left out. So again, don't you dare, you're the wrong person to talk about what they should and shouldn't be doing. And I will bet money that if Wendy was talking about her children, you guys would be rolling your eyes and making faces too because you guys don't like her. Giselle has made it clear that she cannot stand either one of them, does not like them, refuses to say hello to them. So why do they need to show her all this respect? Giselle is the same woman who went to Wendy and Eddie's Happy Eddie event two episodes ago and did not speak to either one of them. When Eddie gave his speech thanking them all for coming, Giselle was not paying attention. She purposely took her mirror out, fixing her hair, when Wendy said, thank y'all for coming, we all shared some laughs and had some fun, Giselle said, was I laughing? I don't remember laughing. Why would she say that I was laughing? Giselle has shown in every single episode, every time Wendy and Candace are mentioned or are around, that she does not see it for them. So again, Robin, how dare you even open up your mouth to say, oh, that's just so messed up. They're cutting their eyes and rolling their eyes. Have some respect. No. No. Mm -mm. Respect is a two-way street. In order to get respect, you have to give respect. So now Wendy interjects and she says, look, let me just say this. We all know that Florida is not the best state right now. In Florida, we're seeing black and brown boys being killed for no reason. And they're justifying it by saying that it's about standing your ground. Then she goes on to say that she would not send her black sons to a school in Florida because of what's going on. So Giselle is upset hearing this. And then she says, well, I'm sending my black daughter there and she has Jesus, she'll be fine. And I saw people on social media saying that Wendy was petty to bring that up. And I said, how is Wendy being petty? Because Wendy has every right to jump in the conversation and give her two cents. Also, Wendy has the most knowledge about this because she is in the political space, is she not? And if anybody was being messy, you could say that Mia was messy for even bringing this up in the first place. If we're being honest, I just said, I noticed that for some reason, a lot of the viewers always want to find fault with whatever Wendy and Candace say, but it seems like Mia and Ashley and everybody else gets pass after pass after pass. So Giselle says, look, at the end of the day, while Grace is going to a state that has a lot of stuff going on, she's also encountered a ton of racism in Maryland as well. So it is what it is. So now Karen says, well, I'm praying for Grace. And now Karen goes on to say that this entire group has a lot to be thankful for. And Giselle jumps in and says, Karen, you're right about that. But at the same time, everybody in this group should be able to tell one another when we fall short. Now I said, Giselle, this is hilarious coming from you. Because anytime somebody tells you when you've fallen short, you ice them out and no longer speak to them. You're not somebody who can be told when they're wrong. You and Robin have gotten away with so much and people have tried to call y'all out and you get upset and you make it like you're the victims. The only person I feel who's successful in calling you two out are Karen and Katie Ross when she was on the show. So anyhow, Giselle goes on to say that when Karen threw out that rumor about Mia screwing a rapper and a married man at NECA's house last week, she says that if she had done that, she'd be accused of trying to destroy marriages and she wants to know why is it okay for Karen to say it, but not her. And I said, one, Mia has been saying some slick stuff about Karen for a whole season now. Two, Karen has been facing rumors about her marriage since the beginning of this franchise. And three, Giselle, there's a difference between throwing out some rumors and then throwing out complete lies about somebody that could destroy them financially, socially, and every which way. What you did to Candace and Chris last season does not compare to what Karen said to Mia last week about her screwing a rapper. So let's not. 
what you're talking about is apples and oranges. So Karen says, let me stop you right there because y'all have all come after my marriage time and time again. Now you have Candace in the background and she says, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and may I just say that Candace's side commentary throughout this conversation had me screaming. <laughs> But Karen goes on to add that this entire group has been disrespectful to her and her marriage. So now she turns to Mia and says, and Mia, I brought you into this group. I said, let her know, Karen, let her know. <laughs> let them know, Greg. Oh, I can show a picture. the horn on the ass. Doop, doop, boop, boop. Bam. Now, let me say this. Good friends and good friend groups are hard to come by. Ask me how I know. So if I bring you into my circle, I do expect a level of respect and loyalty because folks are stingy with introducing you to people, okay? So if somebody does introduce you to a group and they're all nice and sweet, you do owe it to that person who brought you into that group to have their back and to be a good friend to them, right? So I understand why Karen said, girl, I brought you into this group. So for you to turn around and disrespect me and my marriage, you have me messed up. Now, one thing about Mia, Mia talks in circles, doesn't make much sense. And we know that she lies like a damn rug. So now she turns it around like she's the victim. And she says, but Karen, why did you lie on me and my marriage? You said that I was screwing a rapper. So Karen says, oh no, girl, let's not play these games because you talked about me and my marriage behind my back last year. Whereas when I said that about you and the rapper, I said it to your face. So Karen says, Mia, at the end of the day, I'm human and I bleed too. So now Mia says, well, I know that. That's why I haven't shared the real story. And they're all like, girl, what's the real story? So Karen says, Mia, can you not, you don't know my real story and don't throw out these threats like you're gonna say something about me, like just stop, you don't know anything. So you have Mia saying, okay girl, you wanna play these games? Like I'm sitting on some tea, like I know some stuff about you. And I just said, Mia, shut up. Mia lies so damn much. I'm like, I want her to get checked out and get some help. Mia, if you really had some tea on Karen, you would have spilled it by now. And of course you have the peanut gallery, Giselle and Ashley saying, oh, well, obviously Mia has some dirt. You have Ashley saying that folks are still talking about Karen and her marriage in the streets. I said, Ashley, you should be the last one talking about anybody and their marriage. Let's talk about why you're still not divorced. So again, not too much about what the streets are saying about Karen and her marriage. Y'all want Karen to be this cheater so bad. And let me say this, Karen does not strike me as a dumb woman. I get the impression that if her and Ray do have an arrangement, they've made it clear that they won't discuss it with anybody. It's between them and them only. And she makes sure that she's discreet. But best believe Karen and Ray are not dumb enough to have their business out in the streets like that about her with other men. And I'm pretty sure that Ray knows about everything. So them thinking that they're going to expose Karen as, oh, she's this cheater. Baby, Ray already knows what's going on. And he's just happy to be there with his wife who's 17 years younger than him. He's happy that she didn't leave him. He's just lucky to still breathe the same air that Karen breathes, okay? So y'all trying to act like y'all know all this tea and y'all know all this dirt and oh girl, don't let me expose your tea. Karen and Ray already have an arrangement, most likely if they are open or she is doing something on the side and he already knows and he's okay with it. He's unbothered. So now Kierna jumps in and she says, it feels like you guys are talking at each other and not to each other. So now she addresses how Giselle was the only one who checked on her and she turns to Candace and Wendy and she says, and I thought that you guys would check on me. You guys are my friends. So now Candace says, girl, I'm sorry. I had no idea you were that sick. And now Wendy says, I gave you a ginger ale earlier. Now production, let me get on y'all quickly because why would you cut that out? 
Y'all have me thinking that Candace and Wendy didn't give a damn about their friend because I remember that I got on them in the last episode and I said, really? How do you guys not check on your friend like that? And the whole time, Wendy actually did check on her and gave her a ginger ale and y'all cut that out and chopped and screwed it to look like Giselle was the only one who cared about her. So now dinner is over, they go back to the villa. And may I say, I am getting so tired of these boring housewives vacations. Where are the days where they would go out to dinner and then hit the club? Why are we seeing them go right back to the hotel after dinner? I feel like these trips are so dry. Even on Beverly Hills, they were in Barcelona and we barely saw them do anything and they didn't even go out. I'm like, do y'all not go to the clubs anymore? Like what's going on? Because in their earlier seasons, the OC ladies, they would go to the clubs. They would be in Mexico standing up on the tables. Remember that? They would go to Puerto Vallarta with Vicky. They would whoop it up. Then we saw on Atlanta, when they went to South Africa, they all hit the club and Marlo was making it rain on all of them. Remember that? Give us some nightlife. And half of this cast is under 40, so why are y'all going right back to the hotel anyway? Y'all don't have any energy? Like, what's going on? So now it's the next morning, everybody's getting ready, and we see a short scene with Giselle, Neca, and Mia outside, and they're talking about the conversation last night. So Mia says, Karen thinks that just because she introduced me to this group that I'm a slave to her. And Giselle says, yeah, I know. That's not friendship. I said, Giselle, you don't know what friendship is. So again, why are you talking? Also, Mia, you think that throwing Karen under the bus is going to get Robin and Giselle to like you more. So now they're all eating breakfast and now Mia's being sarcastic. She's like, hi, Karen, good morning. Let me serve you breakfast today because I'm a slave to you. Karen was not that amused. She said, okay, Mia, we already talked about this last night at dinner. Let's move forward. Let's move past it. Like I'm done. So now Giselle says that she has no plans to talk to Wendy or Candace because of last night. She says that she can't believe that Wendy and Candace were making faces while she was talking about her daughter. Then she goes on to say how they had the stank faces on and they always have stank faces. I said, Giselle, you must not see yourself. You're the one who's constantly with a stank face every time they're around you. You keep making it very clear that you don't like them. And also Giselle, the delusions to say that you're not going to speak to them today when the gag is you haven't spoken to them this entire season. You have ignored them this entire season. You have not said more than two words to Wendy or Candace. You haven't spoken to Candace at all. And the only time you spoke to Wendy was earlier on when you guys were in Austin and you were questioning Wendy about the rumors about her mom allegedly calling up NECA. That's the only time you spoke to Wendy this season. So again, for you to say, I'm not going to talk to them today because I'm disgusted by their behavior at dinner last night, you don't make any sense. And even though I think that the vast majority of this cast can go and be swapped out, if Bravo, for whatever reason, wanted to keep everybody and fire one person, I would say that one person should be Giselle. Because like I said, Giselle is holding this group back severely. This group could actually thrive if she were gone. I actually think that Robin and Candace could repair their friendship if Giselle left the show. And I also feel like Wendy and Robin could also repair their friendship as well too. But anyhow, they all go outside to play this game. And of course, it's a card game where they ask each other questions about sex. Now I will say in this scene, it was actually fun. They were interacting with each other for the most part. Everybody was in good spirits. They were laughing. There was no drama. So I was happy to see that. I said, finally. So Wendy picks up a card asking Kierna if she has a sex fantasy that she's never shared with anybody. Kierna gives this long-winded answer. Wendy rings the buzzer like, girl, boo, with this answer. It's not good. What are your fantasies? Have you done them? Yes or no? <laughs> now, Kierna reads a card and she goes on to ask Wendy, what's the longest time that her and her man haven't had sex? So Wendy says the longest time they've gone without having sex was two weeks because she was traveling. 
and then she was on her period. So it was just a weird time. And now you have Ashley talking about, oh, so Eddie likes your third brown eye. Giselle says that Ashley's had so many threesomes that she's now counting all these other holes. <laughs> that was actually funny. <laughs> I will say that one thing about playing a sex game, it will bring you together with people that you're really at odds with. I don't know what it is, but sex really does bring folks together. <laughs> Talking about sex, having it. <laughs> because for a minute, I actually forgot that everybody in this group hates each other because they were actually connecting. <laughs> <laughs> so now Karen reads a card directed to Ashley and she says, Ashley, when's the last time you had sex? So of course you have Ashley at first, she doesn't want to talk about it, but then she does admit that the last time she had sex was in January and they want to know, was it with Michael? And I said, probably was with Michael. <laughs> So Ashley says, no, it wasn't with Michael. She says, me and Luke broke up in December and she got a rebound who happened to be an old friend with benefits. So she had sex with him. So now Candace reads a card and she says, Robin, what's a fetish that your partner wants you to do or participate in? And we find out that Juan would actually like to see her have sex with somebody else. So they're all like, oh, okay. So now Robin says that Juan wouldn't care if it was a guy or another girl. And they're all like, oh, now you already know that Karen is about to throw some shade because <laughs> the way Karen is on Robin and Juan. <laughs> and honestly, I wasn't surprised to hear that. I said, yeah, I'm sure Juan does want her to have sex with somebody else man or woman, he's probably thinking, somebody take her off of my hands, please, so that I can have sex with my girlfriend. <laughs> so now Robin turns to ask Giselle, who's better in bed, models, athletes, or pastors? So Giselle says that they're all different, but athletes are so competitive. And she says that she's had one model before and how it's just so different. Now, I was surprised that Giselle didn't say that pastors are the best, considering how she had a true pro in Jamal Bryant, because Jamal was slinging it around to everybody. <laughs> so of course they asked Mia, what's the name of the rapper that you had sex with? Wendy wants some clarification. She says, wait, did Gordon give you permission? And Mia says, oh no, this was before I was married. And we know that Mia lies, so I don't believe a word of it. I think that she's been with rappers before and during her marriage. But anyhow, she goes on to say that she won't say the rapper's name because he doesn't want to be affiliated. I said, okay, girl. <laughs> Not going to hold you. I forgot all about NECA. They go on to ask NECA if she could swap husbands. Who would she get with? But she goes on to say it will be between Juan and Gordon and whoever had the best game that day, that's who she would end up with. So now in her confessional, one of the producers goes on to say, okay, let's play F, marry or kill. So I think she says she would either F or marry Juan because he's the hottest husband. And then she says that she would free Eddie from Wendy. And I said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> NECA, you need some serious help because the game is F, marry, or kill. Freeing somebody is not an option. And the way that Wendy lives in your brain rent free. Do you want Eddie? That's what it's giving. It's giving that you want to swap out Ike and take Eddie for yourself. Because why would you even say that? You really go out of your way to mention Wendy and Wendy is not thinking about you. She is paying you dust. You look obsessed. Now the question for Candace was, how many times do you have sex a week? And Candace says twice because she's tired. Now I said, Candace, girl, only twice a week? You cannot be that tired. Like, I, I don't know, twice a week, that doesn't sound good. And also they've only been married for what, four or five years? And you're already talking like this, five years into it, twice a week? 
But what do I know, right? Because Candace is the one who's married. So twice a week, she's doing something right. <laughs> now the question for Karen was so shady. Robin goes on to ask her, Karen, how many people have you had sex with within the past five years? You guys won't be happy until Karen admits to y'all that she and Ray have an arrangement. Because why would you ask her that? And I love how Karen didn't fall for the bait. She said, well, do wet dreams count? Because if so, then maybe 40. <laughs> so now the game is over and now all the women are at this beachside restaurant. The restaurant looks really pretty by the way. And they're all saying that they had a great time playing the game. NECA says that it was a true sisterhood moment and they all learn things about each other. And now we have Ashley jump in and give us some BS. So she says, I know during the game, you guys had lots of questions about my sex life, but since I'm still legally married, I don't think it's fair for me to discuss my extracurricular activities and what I do. And I said, Ashley, I'm not about to sit up here and play this game with you as nosy and as messy as you are. Don't feed us this mess about how you don't want to talk about your personal life because you're still legally married. We don't care about that. It's so funny how Ashley is another one who feels like the rules don't apply to her. The same way you prod everybody else about their business and their lives, then you have to take it and spill your tea as well. So now Mia interjects and she says, well, if Michael's still taking care of you, then I can understand why you're still legally married. Now Karen had me in tears. She said, well, I would hope that's the case. <laughs> so now Wendy jumps in the conversation and she starts asking Mia if Mia only got with Gordon due to the money. So Mia says, you guys all know what's going on. Gordon is broke as hell. And I was like, damn, the way she's so quick to throw her husband under the bus. <laughs> so Kierna jumps in and says, well, he wasn't broke when you guys got together. And now Mia tells a tale about how when they first met, Gordon was broke. And now Wendy's like, wait, hold on a minute, back it on up. Because when we met you, you told us that you were working at the strip club. Gordon came in there as a high roller and you were saying that he had money. So now Mia's like, well, I mean, what do you consider money? So now Candace is like, you said that he was buying you. He was giving you $10,000 a night. And Mia's like, oh girl, that's just chump change. That's lunch money. So they're all like, excuse me? So now Mia goes on to say that she had an inheritance when they met and they all said, girl, what? What inheritance? I said, Mia, if you don't stop all this lying, Mia needs to get herself checked out because this is sad. We all remember your story of how you grew up. Where did you get an inheritance all of a sudden? Please let me know. Inquiring minds would like to know. Candace had me on the floor. She said, my mind is boggled. I had no idea that there were stripper heiresses. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of the gentlemen who used to come in to the strip club, maybe they put you in their will. Is that what happened? You had some old guy who was tricking off on you and he left you some money in his will. Is that what happened? I don't know, but I feel like Mia is lying about this. And Mia, not too much. The same woman who's always in Fashion Nova and Rainbow. Let's not talk about, oh, well, 10,000 a day is chump change and lunch money. Because why isn't your wardrobe elevated? Why aren't we seeing you in Marnie or Loewe. So again, girl, not too much about, oh, $10,000 a day is just chump change. So now Ashley jumps in and says that she wants to clear a few things up that Michael does not give her any money. And the reason why she still likes being legally married to him because he provides security. And in case something happens, she knows that he will provide for her and the kids. So now we find out from Ashley that she's hired a confidence coach 
who's helping her reclaim her time and revamp her life. And her confidence coach told her to write down a goal that she would like to accomplish. And so Ashley says that one of her goals is to start singing more because she used to be a big theater kid. Now, the way I rolled my eyes so hard that I swear to y'all, my head started hurting. For her to say that she wants to get back into singing more, we heard you sing in what was it, season two or three? With that song, Love and Coffee or Coffee and Tea, whatever it was, girl, stop. The vocals were not there. The microphone was not on. I am a musician. Um, I don't sample, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not Memorex. I go on stage and my microphone is on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just said, girl, you want to be Candace so bad. It's really eating you up inside that she's on tour. She's opened up for Tamar Braxton. She sang the Star Spangled Banner at the Lakers game last week. I mean, Miss Mamas is actually booked and she can carry a note. And like I've said, you're in such a competition with her. Candace gets a $2 million home. You run out and buy a $2.2 million home that you can't even afford and still need to depend on your soon to be ex-husband for the mortgage each month. Now all of a sudden Candace is on tour and now you want to start back up with singing. It's just giving the I want to be Candace. That's what it gives. And I've said this time and time again that Ashley is in a one-sided competition with Candace and she's losing. But Candace hands her a butter knife and says, okay girl, here's your mic, sing into it. And I said, we've come such a long way. In season four, when Candace kicked her out of her house and she stuck that butter knife in her face, I said, it all comes full circle. <laughs> So Ashley gets up to sing her song called Healing and Thriving or Healing and Surviving. <laughs> Y'all, I just feel so petty. Please do not, do not judge me today. I just am in one of those like really silly moods. But when she started singing, I broke out laughing. And I can't find my mic. I'm gonna have to order a new one. But I wanted to perform it for y'all because she sounded a fool. <laughs> but I said the song is fitting for Ashley because she's been in survival mode all her life. But anyhow, they all clap and cheer. Now you have Giselle giving her some encouraging words saying that when folks get divorced, it breaks them down, but Ashley's handling herself the best way she can and how Ashley is a true bad bitch. So now lunch is over and it's time for them to hit the cabanas on the beach. So we find out from Robin that this very beach is where Martha Stewart had her Sports Illustrated cover shoot. So they're all taking sexy pictures of each other. And now we end the episode with Giselle, Mia, Robin, and Ashley talking about Candace and Wendy making faces at the dinner last night. So Robin says, oh my gosh, I peeped that too. That was just so effed up because we're talking about our children here. I was disgusted. So you have Giselle all activated and she says, I'm talking about my daughter and you have your face all scrunched up. Like, are you serious? I didn't even want to talk about it anymore. So then she says, get the F out of here. So at this very moment, we see Wendy walk up to them and she's asking them, what are they talking about? And that's where the episode ends. Now, like I said in the earlier parts of this recap, Giselle and Robin, y'all are delusional to think that Wendy and Candace owe you guys any respect after you have been so awful to them. I'm not gonna keep saying the same thing, but you guys are out of line to feel like Wendy and Candace are wrong. You have been so incredibly rude to them. If the shoe were on the other foot, if Wendy was talking about her kids at that dinner last night, you would have also been making faces, rolling your eyes. You probably would have said, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about her kids? Because every time Wendy speaks, you always have some slick stuff to say out the side of your mouth. Wendy could say the sky is blue and there you are. Why is she saying that? The sky isn't blue. It's actually like a red purple today. So again, you don't have the right to now be upset that they're returning the same energy that you've been giving throughout this season. So I really hope that in the next episode, Wendy gets y'all all together because you guys are the one in the wrong. 
Y'all owe them an apology, not the other way around. And Robin, I'm going to keep saying it. The audacity for you to say that anything is effed up regarding children when you purposely left Wendy's kids out of your family flop day last season. So again, girl, not too much. But y'all, that was my recap. And when I tell you that I am counting down the episodes and I am ready for this reunion, I know they're filming the reunion this Thursday, and I really hope that Wendy and Candace gather everybody. Y'all better eat and leave no crumbs. I'm serious. But y'all, thank you again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.